Hi, my name is Steve Edwards, and today I want to help you with communication skills with your mule. It's really important that you understand your body, the way you shape it, the, the way you look down, the way you look up. is all really important to the mule because he's asking questions about you the whole time. The first thing I want to talk to you is about bits. Bits are your very best communication skills. With, with your skills in communication, the bit will give you everything that you need to have both riding and driving. Now we need to understand when to use what bit at what time. There's a bit that we use called a snaffle bit. And this is a very good example of a snaffle bit right here. The snaffle bit breaks in the center and captures the tongue. The snaffle bit usually will have a ring like this or it can be D-shaped or like this particular bit has a shank on one side. Now, one of the reasons for this one to have the shank on one side is if the mule goes to twist his head to get away from the pressure of the bit, then this shank will touch his jaw, make him uncomfortable, and line him back up. So you wouldn't want to use this particular type of a bit on a mule unless he had a problem turning his head incorrectly. Now let's understand the snaffle bit. This part of the snaffle bit when you pull down on your, on your lines, it then captures the tongue and puts pressure in the tongue in a specific place. Now the purpose of these two parts of the bit is like a bow on a violin. This part of the bit goes across the bar of the mouth, and as it goes across the bar of the mouth, it's making the mule uncomfortable. So the mule is looking for a way to get comfortable. So as they go to move off and get away from the pressure, as long as you hold on to it, making him uncomfortable, he'll keep going. But what he's looking for is for you to finally let go of his mouth. So that's the purpose of these two. Now, I want to tell you how to place the bit in a mule's mouth. We always hear the thought of one wrinkle, two wrinkles, three wrinkles. I want to tell you that the mule will tell you how many wrinkles Another he bit needs we to like have. To use. Now these are mainly helped. used in foundation training and fixing problems. That's what your snaffle bits are for. The other, the other bit we like to use, which is my favorite one to use on my mule riders martingale, is a full ring snaffle. Again, I use a double twisted wire because I have better communication skills with it and it's actually less work than with a smooth snaffle which I'll demonstrate to you later on. So a ring snaffle is something to be used as well. Now as your mule progresses and you're getting a good backup, you're getting a good turn to the right, a good turn to the left, and you're getting a really good whoa, it's time to start getting into a more finished bit. Now when I say a good whoa or a good turn, I don't mean having to pull them. Now, as a teamster, you're going to see that on the movies, these guys slap the lines on a, on a rump of a, a driving animal, and they say, get up. Well, I guarantee you, a teamster is not going to slap no lines on no mule's rump. It's not going to happen. A teamster is going to speak to his mules, and they'll use things like a belly slapper, which I'll talk about another time as well. But they're basically just going to use their hands. When you, you, when you see a teamster driving six mules, you see their hands move no more than this. No more than this. The hands move within a four to, uh, to six inch circle all the way around. You barely see their hands move. And you've got up to, like when I drive 10, I got up to five lines in my hands at one time. I can't have time to switch across. I've got to learn to keep my hands all in one place and completely drive in a small area. So going back to snaffle bits, foundation work and problems, you use the snaffle bit to fix the problem. As you advance, you're going to get into bits that are like a Liverpool bit. Now this Liverpool bit, you have several places to put your line. You also want to have it to where it swivels, swivels on each side. A mule will have a lot more ability to, to listen to you when he's not stiff in the cheek. So you want a bit that, loose, that is loose enough about what I believe works really good on these mules for communication. There's all different types of snaffle bits out there. This particular snaffle bit is a replica of an original snaffle bit that I got from an old cowboy buddy of mine. He told me that if I was going to be training a lot of horses and mules, that I really was going to need this bit. The only thing is, he handed it to me, but he didn't tell me how to use it. So 
it took a lot of years to figure out how to use this bit. When I first saw it, I thought, I'm not going to put that mean and nasty thing in my mule's mouth. No way in the world. Of course, at that time, I was pretty young and strong, and I'd really yank one around. But these days, the older I get, the smarter I want to be. So normally when we look at a smash snaffle bit, it captures the tongue in one spot. With this double twisted wire snaffle bit, it captures the tongue on both spots. It goes on both sides of the tongue. I communicate to the upper bar with the upper bit, the lower bar with the lower bit. So therefore, I'm able to communicate to the whole mouth. Now, one thing mules have taught me over the years is this. They care more about their nose than they do their mouth. And so therefore, snaffle bits and bits in general, mules have no uh, like of them. What they, what they really well, like is how you now, get that thing Ted, out of their mouth. Is to show you a way to, to stop your mule without you having to work so hard, all right? Now today we talk about a mule disengaging their hind quarters. And you're a pretty good sized guy. I want you to drag me all, all around this arena and uh, I'll, I'll, uh, I'll put this bit on you and we'll give it a try. Now we have today folks say disengage the hind quarters. And what they tell you to do is take one rein and pull on it until it bends their head around and they go around in a circle. And that stops them. Well, that looks really good out here in a round, flat pin, but on the side of a mountain or at the Grand Canyon. How can I possibly disengage the hind quarters when it's a mile down here, or disengage the hind quarters when it's a mile straight up here, or I have five mules behind me? How can I disengage the hind quarters? Can't hardly do it. So you're going to, I'm going to try and disengage your hind quarters. You're a mule run away, and I'm going to hold on to one rein, and I want you to drag me around this arena. You're a big enough fella, you can do it. So get a hold of me, pull me. Go ahead. Okay, I'm trying to stop my mule. Whoa, mule. Can't quite get it done. All right, now, Ted, you're a pretty big guy, and you're strong using concrete hands and stuff, but when you've had enough of what I'm getting ready to do to you, I want you to let go. Scares you, don't it? <laughs> he's, he's got this look over his face like, oh, no. All right, now, I, 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 want you to, you, I want you to pull me, all right, the same way. But when you've had enough of this, you let go. All right, you ready? Okay, drag me.